the next thing is once we have seen the basic connectivity in the previous class we have seen the basic connectivity how the connectivity is given by the service provider from lan uh, connecting from router to switch using a straight cable and router to router using uh, different types of wan technologies like lease lines and the next basic example we have seen how the lease lan connection is established so now once we provide the connectivity so now assume that i got some four branch offices so here you can see i got for four branch offices let's say give some names this is site a site b site c and site d so i want to make sure that all these four branch offices should be able to communicate with each other i want to make sure that all these three branch offices has to communicate with each other so to make sure that i am connecting some computers in my lan only the lan connection is there in each and every branch i got a small lan maybe i just have four two computers here it can be more than two or it can be an around 200 computers okay so if i want site a to communicate with site b then compulsory i need to have a router here so i got a router here and not only placing the router that router should be connecting to the other branch office that is site a to b there is a wan connection given by the service provider and from site b to c there is a wan connection given by the service provider and there is a wan connection given by the service provider from site c to d so now to make sure that these four different branch offices to communicate with each other i establish a lan connection connecting to switch and then connecting to my computers and also i did the physical connections between all the four sites so a b c d all the four sites are connected with each other so physical connection is perfect the physical connection is done by the service provider so now simply connecting the physical links will not allow your data to go from one lan to another lan in order to make sure that your data travel from one location to another location one side to another side you have to do lot of things apart from this physical connection the next step will be ip addressing just like in my lan if i am connecting any computer so i cannot use my computer without ip address you know that ip address identify each and every device in the network so if i am connecting a computer and there is no ip address in configured then you know that the device will not be identified because ip address identify the devices similar way i cannot use my pc in my lan without ip address similar way router also requires an ip address router also requires an ip address even we need to assign an ip address to firewall also switches no need ip address not required not compulsory switches are plug and play devices means just you can connect power on and then you can start using it but routers are not like that once you do the physical connections the next thing we need to do is we need to also assign the ip address that is the next step but now the question is how many ip addresses that is the next question so the ip addressing how many ip addresses we need to assign it depends upon the number of interfaces you are connecting like if you take our router 1 if i give router 1 as a name it is connecting one interface to another site and another interface connecting to the lan so which means i need two ip addresses on this router so the number of interfaces you are connecting that many ip addresses you have to assign here now this interface requires three ip addresses so two wan interfaces one lan interface and this interface requires three ip addresses router 3 requires three ips and the router 4 or site d router requires only two ip addresses so depending upon the number of connections you are making based on that we need to assign the ip addresses but now the question is which ip address we need to assign so for that there are some specific rules we need to follow when you are assigning the ip address to the router in that Uh, i can say the first rule all the lan and the wan should be in the different networks or in other words we can say you cannot repeat the same network let's try to understand here now to understand what i'm doing is uh, i'm going to use some network here let's say i'm going to use 192 168 one dot network here so you know same and different networks so if i'm using the default subnet mask i'm using 192168 one dot one here 192.168.1.2 here like you can see i already wrote here you can clearly see here this is 192.168.1.1 this is 192.168.1.2 like that if i another computer 1.3 1.4 1.5 1.6 like that okay so which means i'm going to use 192.168.1.1 network here 
in the LAN and I'm going to use 192.168.2.0 network here. So in case, let's take an example, I'm going to use any C class address. I'm using 192.168.2.0 network here. And similar way, I'm going to use 192.168.3.0 network here. And then I'm going to use 192.168.4.0 network here. So any class you can use, either you can use A class, B class, C class, whatever the class, but make sure that all the LAN should be in different networks. Suppose uh, unknowingly or uh, by mistake or without any information, maybe in case if you configure this network as 192.168.2.0 network, then it is going to affect the communication between this users will not be able to communicate with these users. Because suppose I want to send one packet from here to here, then it, this is 2.1, this is 2.3. maybe three. So whenever it sees, it is going to search within the LAN because it will understand that this is the same network. So it is going to search within the LAN. It will never go outside the router. So always keep in mind when you design the networks, every LAN should be in different networks. Okay, so, so I'm going to use 192.168.4.0 network here. You cannot repeat the same network. That's what here you can see the first line. All the LAN and the WAN should be in different networks. Or in other words, we can say you cannot repeat the same network which you already used in your branch office because this is my company branch office. So I'm going to design the network and based on that design, we need to assign the IP addresses. Now the second rule is router ethernet IP address and the LAN network should be on the same network, which means now just now we discussed that the router interface also requires an IP address. This interface requires IP and this interface also requires an IP address. So first let us start with the LAN interface. So whatever the IP you are going to use here, that IP, let's say I'm going to use 192.168.1.100. This IP should be from the same network what you are using in your LAN. Because you know, just like if we take an example, this device, this computer is one device in my network. Similar way, the router is also one device in my LAN. So now only the difference is the router is going to store your information. Router is going to send your traffic outside the LAN. Means from the LAN, it is going to send to the WAN. So whatever the IP you decide here, that should be from the same network what we are using in the LAN. In case, in case let's say if I assign this as some other network, then that case, this network will not communicate with router because they are different networks. And if you want to communicate between different networks, again, you have to place one more router here, which is something we don't want, right? So probably I can say, so always keep in mind whenever you design the networks, the ethernet IP address, whatever you're using, it should be from the same network, whatever you're using in the LAN. So these two should be in the same network mandatory this and this in the same network, this and this in the same network. So any address you can use, but I prefer to use some address, which is like 100, 200, uh, 300, 400, something like this. So not 400 because there's no 300 IP. There's no 400 because the range is only till 255. So I'm going to use uh, 3.100 here, 4.100 here like that. So if you just try to see here, the IP address here is the same network what I'm using here. The IP address here is the same network what I'm using in the LAN. The IP address same and same. So it's already done. There's a second rule we need to keep in mind. The LAN router Ethernet port and the LAN should be from the same network. Now the third rule, we can say both the interfaces of the router facing each other should be from the same network, which means now we need to make sure that one more thing we need to keep in mind. So the interface is facing it. means this interface and this interface, these two interfaces from the same network. So if you see here, which means I have to assign the IP address as 192.163.10, 192.163.11. Is it correct? So if we just try to check out, I'm using 3.10 here. I'm using 3.11 here. So this is wrong because already 3 dot network I'm using here, right? You cannot repeat the same network here. So this is also one thing you need to keep in mind. So not only you have to make sure that you are using the IP addresses as per the rules, 
you have to make sure that you are not you breaking the other rules you cannot repeat the same network so that's the reason i'm using 192.168.5.1 192.168.5.2 here so either you can use any network even you can use 10.001 here 10.002 here also it works fine because 10. is different network and i'm not using 10. network anywhere but to have an easy understanding i'm just going with uh, 5.1 here 5.2 here you know c class contains three network portions so similar way i'm using 6.1 6.2 here 7.1 7.2 here okay and finally the last rule once you satisfy all the three rules automatically the last rule also satisfies all the interfaces of the router should be in different networks means now in my example in my example here so this is one interface this is another interface and this is another interface so this router 3 is having three interfaces and all the three interfaces are in different networks you can see this is on 6 dot network that is 192.168.6.0 network this is 192.168.7.0 network and the LAN interface is 192.168.3.0 network and we know that in the C class the first three portions represents your network portions so all the LAN should be from the different network that's the first rule let me just quickly revise so all the LAN as well as all the WAN should be in different networks you cannot repeat the same network which you already used okay so it can be in different locations because there are different locations but whatever the locations it is used by a customer their network the network is designed by the administrator of the organization so when you're designing we have to keep in mind these basic rules okay so we it can be any ip some people think that it should be public ip no this is your private van you can use any private ip addresses anywhere so we don't really need to use any public ip here we just use only private IP addresses here. Okay, public IPs are only required if you are going to internet. And here we are not using any internet line. We are using a private dedicated line given by the service provider for connecting my two different branch offices. So all the LAN should be in different networks. The router ethernet and the LAN should be from the same network. Router ethernet and the LAN should be in the same network. And the interfaces facing each other should be on the same network. And finally, all the interfaces of the router should be in different networks so if you design your I network if you design your IP addressing if as per these rules then only the routing process will be efficient means routing process only works in case if you design your networks as per these rules so this is something which we need to keep in mind when you are designing any networks so this is a same steps the below diagram demonstrates the above rules the same diagram which I have shown you just now okay so from this we we got some basic understanding on how uh, how we are going to design the networks okay the basic ip addressing configuration so now we are ready to start our uh, lab here the lab nothing but basic ip address configuration so where we are going to connect two routers probably two routers three routers four routers and we are going to assign some basic ip addressing as per the rules like you can see router 1 is connecting to router 2 with 10.001, 10.002 IP address and then router Ethernet IP is connecting to this address and this as per the same network and then we are going to add some commands here so we are going to see this what are the steps, the different steps we are going to follow okay the steps will be designing the topology and then IP addressing as per the rules and then we will verify show IP interface brief so probably we'll see this uh, practical in our next video where we'll we'll do some basic configuration like we design the topology and we design the ip addressing and then finally we verify the status of the interface by using show ip interface brief command and then also we'll we'll also do some troubleshooting on the connectivity path